So, Neil, welcome back to the city. Uh, what are you doing in New York? You grew up in Colorado. Uh -huh. uh, you're training down in the Carolinas now. What brings you back to New York? Um, well, first it's a home away from home. I got my right. racing start here. So okay. uh, it's a natural place to come back and visit. But last week was racing in New Jersey for uh, Tour of Somerville and okay. the base camp Criterion in Basking Ridge. And then uh, this weekend, I guess eight days later, doing uh, the Air Force Cycling Classic, two races in DC. So okay. in between, um, rather than going back home to North Carolina, this is a nice way for me to minimize my travel and also visit my friends and kind of get back to my roots here in New York. Very well. Yeah. Great. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, seems like you're having a rock star 2011. Um, I was looking through just some of the statistics on bike reg and we have High Point City Crit, fifth place the first day, third place, third place the next. Uh, Boone Roubaix down in North Carolina, Boone, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, fifth place there. We have the Adam Little Memorial Criterium. We have an eighth place the first day, second place the following day. And then at the uh, Blythewood Omnium, we have a fifth place there. And this is even just paraphrasing. I'm not, I mean, sure. if I was going to go 10 and above, I would be talking for a few more minutes here. Yeah. Uh, so you're going off to a good year. This is your second year on the team. Are you happy with where you're at um, and how you've progressed? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's uh, it's been a really, really steep learning curve, I'd say. Okay. I mean, my entire, like, you know, I only started racing three years ago and from the start it was just like learning something new every single week and um, I'm just like I'm so blown away by how bike racing is so much a contest of who can make smart decisions and who can who can be an intelligent bike racer and an sure. informed bike racer beyond just who can pedal the hardest um, and so even my second year of the team like I think back to I think back to where I was one year ago just starting you know these races and um, things were still confusing. I didn't necessarily know what was going on. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way I'm progressing and just okay. not much of my understanding of racing, but also the industry in general, like how to, you know, how to get to know the right people or how to have a presence out on the internet or sure. um, whatever it's all about. So. And, and speaking about that growing and the internet, you have a blog on Bicycling Magazine titled mm -hmm. Rambling Man. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned, you talk about some of these things about how to grow as a cyclist and how uh, you've grown as a competitor as well. Uh, I think one of the questions you might field a lot is, Neil, I want to be a professional cyclist as well. Sure. What do I do? How do I get there? Uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the interesting uh, things you talked about on the blog, to paraphrase you, you said, it's not just being well-trained and yeah. a smart rider, mm -hmm. but being a clever rider yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, you know, it's a matter of, first, I mean, if, if you really want to, like, say, get on a pro team, yeah. um, you have to go to the races where pro teams are racing and go head-to-head -head against those guys and show sure. them that you can compete. Because you could, I mean... It, it's it's hard to win a Central Park bike race, and the guys who win Central Park bike races are really good. And the same guys who are good enough to win Central Park bike races are usually good enough to go out to you know big NRC races and really compete. Right. But just winning a Central Park race wouldn't mean as much in terms of getting on a pro team because those guys don't know who you're racing against. They can't see that you're actually capable of competing on like a professional level. Whereas if you go out to Tour Somerville or Baskin Ridge or any NRC race or sure. that level. Um, and you have team directors there and they can see that you're actually capable of riding that level, that's what really is what is really what gets people, um, what enables them to move up to the next level. But even then, um, you know, you mentioned being clever. Yeah. And I think that, you know, as you move up in racing, you know, everyone's, everyone becomes a very finely tuned machine and there actually isn't that great a difference. Um, between people in terms of physical ability. And it's okay. What makes, you know, it's, it's, it's the really small things, it's the one or two percent difference that if you're the guy who knows how to pedal less through corners, then yeah. maybe you have a little bit more energy at the end of the race, and that's why you win. Not because you're stronger, but just because every single lap you were you used two percent less difference. And so it's really, yeah, okay. um, attention to details and just get yourself out there, is what I'd say. So was there a learning curve for you in terms of uh, tactics and how you handle the bike then I mean doing these NRC races and doing the park races was there was there some skills that you had to brush up on a little bit in yeah I'd so? say a couple things were different um, first just I mean the actual like layout of courses I do mostly criteriums and so those are often you know, narrower streets and 
narrow corners with greater changes in speed. Sure. Um, and so the tactics that you might use uh, are different there, both in terms of you know, kind of like the um, kind of just the intuitive tactics of how you might take a corner and when you might lay off the brakes, and also the actual you know, overt tactics of I'm going to attack now, or this is what our team is, this is what our plan is today. Okay. Um, but really, what also is is that. I'm racing in a different place usually every single week, and so it's rare that I get to encounter a course more than one time. And so okay. you you race at Floyd Bennett Field, or you race at Central Park or Prospect Park, and you're doing the same race over and over. And everyone lo knows that okay, you attack on Harlem Hill, or you know <laughs> at Floyd Bennett Field, there's a crosswind on this section, so make sure on this side of the road. And it becomes a little bit more formulaic and obvious. Whereas one thing that I really had to learn how to do was show up to a race, see a course for the first time, and you know quickly develop an understanding of how that's going to affect a bike race, just like right off the bat, not not getting to do it a dozen times like you might okay. some other races. Fantastic. On the bicycling blog, you mentioned a common mistake among rising athletes is to focus solely on preparation and not enough on race day execution. Mm -hmm. And I think we just touched on that a little bit. Uh, is yeah. there any advice you could give to up and coming racers in New York? On that note, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, looking in terms of your training, I sure. guess let's talk about that first. Going from racing here, and then now you're on a professional team, going into your second year, is is there a, a big difference in your you know your training in terms of hours? How do you quantify it? Right. I mean. Right. Well, uh, there is definitely you know. I just have I have more time to train, and you know, since this is a full time thing for me, okay. Um, you know, I my, my constraint isn't you know how much time I have because of a job or because of you know family or whatever. My constraint is really how much my body can handle. So, uh, okay. especially during the off season, it's been tons of tons of hours. Um, and even you know when I'm off when I'm off the bike, it's you know I concentrate on trying to stay off my feet. And okay. it's even ironic when I come to New York City, I don't ride my bike get around town. I take the subway. Okay. Precisely because <laughs> I don't want to ride my bike in the heat. And it's like it's come full circle and it's crazy. But um, you know, also, you know, training with a power meter and I have a, a cyclops tool and you know, everything gets very um, quantitative and it feels like a big science experiment. And the thing about that is it's easy to get too obsessed with those numbers and to look at, oh man, I can put out X watts for this many minutes or sure. something like that. And um, you know, it's what's amazing is that at the end of the day um, fitness is only one tool among many that you would use to do well in bike races. And I think that, okay. um, you know, two other factors, and there are many, but two that come to mind are both someone's ability to stay relaxed um, in a bike race and think clearly. A lot of that just comes with experience and um, okay. not, not psyching yourself out. And then the other part of it is also showing up on race day and just being willing to suffer and absolutely turn yourself inside out. And then moving on and talking about some of those guys that can just crush it and just kill it. Mm -hmm. uh, you've gone from racing at Floyd Benefield, Prospect Park, Central Park in New York to now you're moving around the country yeah. uh, racing and you're mm -hmm. probably coming across this incredible talent that can do so. Right. Um, recently in the news we've seen 60 Minutes you know, chasing down Lance Armstrong, Tyler Hamilton, yeah. uh, George Hincapie. Uh, do performance enhancing drugs ever make you, you know, wonder what's going on with my competitors? Do you ever sure. wonder about that? Does it cross your mind? Or do you think it's better just to focus on yourself, not worry about it? Uh, yeah. Do you think there's a presence for... Well, I mean, it's obviously a concern just because, you know, there's, there's so, much, there's so yeah. much talk of it. And, you know, when people, people are cheating in races, and those, that's like directly, that directly affects anyone at any level, but, you know, in my case, yeah. that means I'm I'm less likely to like get a good contract next year, or, like I lose prize money, and that, that has like a very like real impact. And so, while it is a concern, like I feel like people in my generation of cycling have this outsider's perspective on first of all like what happened you know a decade ago with say the U.S. Postal team that's under scrutiny right now, but even if there is doping in the U.S. Peloton mm -hmm. at my level. No one's, no one's open about it. If, I think you see that in the past, there, you know, especially in Europe, there may have been this culture of doping where it was almost it was quietly accepted among people, and that absolutely is not the case today. So if it's going on, people are doping very quietly. Um, 
So, I mean, I haven't encountered anything directly. But then the other thing is, like in my own case, like I'm so I'm still so new to racing and I'm still learning so much that when I look back at my performances, mm -hmm. of course it would have been nice if I could pedal hard. That's always useful. But in every right. single race, I can, except for the ones I've won, <laughs> but in every single one, I say, I wish there's something I could have done different. Like, had I known how the race was going to unfold, had I had I had the right strategy, had I had the right foresight, whatever, that would have gotten me a better result or a better performance for the team. Okay. Um, and so since I still have this entire area of cycling, this whole set of skills that I feel like I haven't completely optimized, I don't, I'm not desperate looking for like a performance enhancement just because I have, I have other resources to look into I guess you could say like right you know, just, just learning the skills of the sport so um, to be honest it's, it's not on my mind that much yeah so where are we going next what are the next few weeks look like for you uh, you mentioned in your blog also that you set goals for yourself mm -hmm. are you still setting goals for yourself are you still writing these down uh, yeah you know are you happy with where you're at mm -hmm. and where you're going um, so what, what, what race is coming up next for you? Okay, so doing the uh, Air Force Cycling Classic right. down in D.C. Um, this weekend. Okay. And that's Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be hot and hard. It's one of those, one of those criteriums where it's, it's 100 kilometers long and you know, 150 guys start and like 40 guys finish. It's just, I'm just bracing myself for it. Um, okay. But a really an exciting event. And then uh, from there, going out to Wisconsin. Um, Fantastic. For... Tour of America's Dairyland. Um, me and one of our, our, our sprinter on the team, uh, Luke Keo, but the rest of the team is actually going out to uh, Nature Valley. So we're splitting our team that weekend. Okay. Um, Has your role changed with the team in the last year? Uh, I mean, you mentioned you know team captain, sprinter, right, right. and whatnot. Um, it has not in uh, my specific skill set hasn't changed that much. I mean. We, we have a very egalitarian team, which is great. Generally, you know, when okay. you start a bike race, um, you know, it's not like guys are racing for themselves, but everyone kind of gets their opportunity to go for the result. And so, you know, usually... That's great. Um, you know, if, if, when a race comes down to a field sprint, we know we know who the field sprinters are and we'll, we'll report them. But throughout a bike race, anyone can jump in a break, anyone can go for the victory. Um, and, you know, I've always been just more of an all-arounder who can also sprint if I need to. Sure. Um, and I feel like last year, I was just more kind of, I was along for the ride. It was my first year in the team. It was my first time in speed races. And I was just really, I was there to learn as much as I was to actually contribute. And I got my opportunities and, you know, tried to make the most of them. And then this year, so team tactics, same role. But, you know, I've, I've done, this is my second time doing most of these races. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I feel much more comfortable at this level. So... I'm more likely, you know, the expectations of me are higher. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm less likely to use my inexperience as an excuse, say, if I do something wrong. Or, I see. Um, it's up to me to more likely to, like, read a race or to, you know, like, get the other guys in the team to, to respond appropriately. So, sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we wish you the best of luck uh, here in New York. I'm pretty sure that we're all cheering you on and supporting you. you. Uh, so thank you for coming out and talking with us today. We have Neil Bezdek with Team Mountain Khakis and Smart Stop. All so right. you're uh, racing the uh, Ridley Noah mm -hmm. over yeah. here. Beautiful. And um, also we want to mention your blog, right? You're yeah. on Bicycling Magazine. It's called mm -hmm. Rambling Man. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, shared Scott's a little bit of information. Style. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully we can keep up with you on there and keep writing for us. Okay. And take care. All right. Thank you.